Yes, that's right. The Survivor Know-It-Alls are back here. Whoa. Snuck up on you today. We've got Whoa. a noon Eastern Survivor oh. Know-It-Alls here. Only five minutes late. That's, that's pretty early good. Pretty that's good. Early. And really an hour and 55 minutes early if that's you think right. about that's it. That's right. Yeah. And so back here with my guru, hmm. Stephen Fishback. Hmm. Hello. Um, how are you, Rob? Yeah, doing good. Uh, oh, Stephen, I like your shirt. No, thank you. It's a sweater. It's, it's a jacket. I mean, it's like a it's a, it's a jacket, a wool jacket, or like a coat. Overcoat. Yeah. Coat. Yes. Coat. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, how are you? Yeah, doing pretty good. Uh, we're a little bit earlier, so our exit interview with Banu has not posted, uh, hmm. but be on the lookout. It should be dropping right after this podcast. We don't want to counter program ourselves. So uh, we will be putting up the Banu exit interview. Had a nice chat with Banu. He had yeah. a great plaid shirt on. In oh, you know, was, it, was it in tribute? I don't believe so. He's a super fan, though. All he talks about is what a super fan he is. He is a super fan. Yes, but I do He's not part of believe... the devolution of strategy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, a lot of people felt like this was too much Banu. Uh, they felt like that maybe this was getting a little Bon old. Wow. Wow. That's pretty good, too. That's very good. Yeah. Um, I agree. Like, <clears throat> here's the thing. I mean, we sort of talked about this a couple episodes ago, even before last week, which was, you know, 13 confessionals or something, which I think was yeah. the most ever in like the first three episodes. I think he actually ever. I saw this on Twitter this morning that I, I think that he's uh, four away from Erica right now for confessionals. <laughs> in this season. Season. That's yes. Terrible. I that Regis That's Sue on Twitter had that. Terrible. What? Oh, OK. Um. <laughs> Like among the most confessionals ever, and this is the problem with Bonu, right? Like I think that you know all the the things people say about Bonu, you know, plays with so much heart, you know, is interesting from a strategic perspective because he creates demands on the other players to manage him. Like yeah. that is true. What was particularly frustrating about Bonu was just how much of him there was, and we sort of talk yeah. about this, like other players, like you know, I mean, I always go back to Sifu from last season. Um, and again, like, not I mean, enough, I pause. not like, enough Sifu. Season, it's all yeah. so somewhere yeah. in the past five seasons. We had Sifu and, um, you know, we just got a little Sifu, just a little Sifu and Banu and Sifu are not, you know, totally equivalent players or they're not in totally equivalent positions, but you know, these kind of like big, larger than life, somewhat irritating presences. Um, I feel like they're, they're, they're better in maybe not even small doses, just like normal doses. They don't need yeah. to be extra big doses. By the way, Stephen, here's uh, from the chat. Brooks is not to be weird, but wow. Stephen, your skin is glowing today. Oh, you Drop know, my that daughter, uh, thing, please. My daughter, um, moisture. She's like into like getting putting moisturizing cream, and like one thing she likes to do is like put it on my wife and me. So maybe it's working. Okay, it's maybe great. it's working. Share that with her. Okay. But uh, speaking yeah. of which, I was watching a, a clip that you posted of your interview with Marianne yesterday. Yeah, you look very handsome. I never oh, take the time you. to like appreciate <laughs> oh. you aesthetically because I'm so busy uh, being yes intellectually terrible stimulated. Taste, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, to go back to what you were saying, yeah, I, I think that for Banu, like, I, I think that for Banu, it was a little unfair in that Banu, uh, and maybe that he was, uh, you know, rooting for this, but ba Banu did not plan to have seven hours of content in four episodes <laughs> right. of, like, Banu, Banu did not know there would be uh, two two-hour episodes and the 90-minute episodes uh, out there on the island uh, Banu, you know, did not know necessarily like if if Banu's tribe had gone to uh, maybe two tribal councils, maybe you would not have seen so much Banu in the first four episodes. So I do think that we probably we got too much of Banu, but I don't think that that's necessarily Banu's fault of that how much we were oversaturated with the Banu. The only thing I want to say about that is. He is, we have learned, I guess, over the past week, maybe people knew this already. I have learned over the past week that he is an actor dancer, which, yes. you know, an actor dancer also seems to be creating a lot of drama and getting a lot of screen time. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of, you have to wonder, is he, you know, getting a lot of screen time because he's a sensitive, emotional actor dancer, or is he an actor dancer who knows how to pull attention onto himself? It's interesting uh, that, you know, I, I went back and I watched his preseason interviews with Mike Bloom uh, and he talked about his his superpower that he said was that he has the ability to read people. Mm. Uh, that is his superpower. His wow. kryptonite, though, he told Mike Bloom, was knowing when to play with people's emotions on the, sh on the mm. show. That was going to be his kryptonite of that he would not be able to necessarily restrain himself. I, I don't think that Banu is a 
super, you know, calculated person where is, you know, operating to try to get a maximum clout out of all of this. But uh, I, I do uh, feel like that he, if this was his intention, he definitely did a good job. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to say was that his story, like, is legitimately insanely inspiring. And it's, like, such an incredible tale. And someone who is, like, right, you know, climbing up. As someone myself, I'm on my way down, you know. <laughs> my grandfather was a lawyer. My dad it was the doctor. I'm a Survivor podcast co-host. So I'm going <laughs> in the other direction. And I have so much respect for Banu, who's on the ascent. Yeah. Yeah, he he does have an amazing story. I, and that's the thing. I feel like that, you know, we hear Jeff and what he's looking for from the show. And Banu walks in like, this is perfect. This is the stories that we're trying to tell. And so Banu wants to be shown. He's representing for all these different people in, you know, all with all these different intersectionalities. And uh, and that's really incredible for Banu. And that's great. But maybe isn't the reason why people are coming to Survivor. You're like, you sh if we can get that, great. But isn't the reason maybe we're coming to Survivor? And I think that that's where the disconnect might be. Yeah, yeah. But again, like seeing Banu as like an obstacle for other good players to play around, I think, you know, I think the, the show needs more of that. You know, and we talked about this a little bit last yeah. week where you want there to be bad players. That makes it interesting for the good players. If everyone is just operating with the same, you know, essential level of gamesmanship, then it becomes just mechanical. It becomes chess. It becomes the thing that people have been frustrated mm -hmm. with, with contemporary survivor, where it's just, you yeah. know, equivalent pieces being moved around a board it becomes unemotional. Yeah. So I don't think the issue was necessarily Banu's, uh, you know, involvement in the season, but I do feel like that the way that this unfolded, I, I think plays into sort of like uh, the, weak points of the three tribe format and the nowhere to hide right. idea where, you know, had this been in a two tribe season and where maybe Banu is one of seven people that there would have been maybe like an out where not necessarily that Banu was going to be able to uh, figure out a different plan, but maybe one of the other players might've been more motivated of like, yeah, sure. We could take out Banu, but there's also this other plan which might happen. Like, I can't feel like that what we got out of last night's episode where we went to a four-person tribal council where it was a foregone conclusion where the person getting voted out did not even have a vote or a shot in the dark to be able to play. No chance at an idol. I can't imagine in the blueprint that they have for Survivor. It's like, okay, this is one of our optimal outcomes. Yeah, exactly. Well, and it seemed like that was a possibility, right? I mean, Q attempting to eliminate Kenzie instead of Banu and keep Banu kind of his as his pocket ally, like that would be very interesting, right? As the season wore on, you know, can you control Banu, this extremely emotional player whose you know gut instinct is to tell everyone everything? I feel like that would be a very that is interesting. interesting story. Yes, that would like if that played out across the season, I think that would be interesting to watch. You know, even you know, I I mean, I think Kenzie's playing a very strong game, but like even more than Kenzie's strong game, which is something that we've probably you know closer to what we've seen before. This attempt to control someone like Banu would kind of be an interesting story. So it is too bad that that didn't really have the chance to you know flourish. Yeah, and. With this three tribe format, we're gonna now have uh, this situation where now, okay, this this group of three is coming into potentially emerge at a very big disadvantage. Uh, now, do you think that they have a shot to move forward in the post Banu world? What's so interesting is that most th most people who come from the decimated tribe, right? There's a sense of their weakness, right? Oh, those people, they're no good. Like they're that's the the f up tribe. They're screwed. But what's interesting is that like the two pieces of information that the other tribes have about these three players all make like totally elevate their threat level. One is like Kenzie is a mastermind and the other is that Q and Tiffany are a pair that totally screws them over because the, the major advantage to being um, as part of a, of a screw up tribe, right? Amat Singh is that people underestimate you, mm -hmm. but instead like all they know about these guys is that Oh, one is a strategic threat and the other is like a, a duo threat. And and that's terrible. It like it really puts a target on them instead of giving them the opportunity to evade a target. Yeah. 
I think that they are going to have a very hard time moving forward. I yeah. mean, perhaps one of them could potentially, and maybe Kenzie could be the one to flip on the pair of Q and Tiffany, but I don't really have high hopes for anybody coming out of Yanu. Yeah, it's tough. I do think, you know, I mean, Q had a great confessional. Like, in addition to being this young, athletic guy, like, now I'm also part of a pair. You know, I'm screwed. Like, mm -hmm. I would be so furious if that happened. You know, and 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 the, the Q training scene with Bonhu was very funny and also, I thought, good. Like, good for him. He's like, we might be stuck with this person. Let's try to make the best of it. I mean, that is what you have to do on Survivor. You have to say, these are the cards I've been dealt. And I don't like these cards. I'd like to get rid of this card, but I have mm -hmm. to figure out how to make it work. And I really, I had so much respect for Q for putting in the effort. Um, yeah. And I also completely understood Kenzie, where she was coming from, where Bonnie like comes to her and is like, now it's your turn to, to you know, coddle my emotions. Um, and she was like, no, I don't want you. You screwed us all over. I can't. She I don't didn't want... even say that. She was like, hey, can I just get five yeah. minutes? And yeah. uh, he went off into the jungle and yeah. was like inconsolable yeah. after that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it really is crazy. Just, you know, that level of emotional you know, demand. It is mm -hmm. like, it's, it's, it's really a challenge to play with someone like that. I mean, I, I was trying to think to myself, like, would I rather play? I mean, I know we talked about this a little bit last week. Like, would I rather play with Bono? I would I rather play with Abby? Like Abby too. Like you had to constantly put in the effort to keeping her, her happy. Otherwise she would turn on you. And it looked like Bono is basically doing that. You know, he was like, and Q treating me like a child. And, mm -hmm. um, even the people who were reaching out to him, he was lashing out at because, you know, there was just one brief moment where he wasn't being coddled by the rest of the group. Yeah. So I think that Abby, like, uh, there's more uh, bite there with the Brazilian right. dragon. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. You don't like want to yeah, more danger. Get, get on her uh, bad side right. where Banu, like, I, yeah, he might screw up the plans, but you're not necessarily worried about the counter strike from Banu. Yeah, that's right. And that's why I would rather play with Banu than Abby. <laughs> yeah right? yeah well, um yeah abby like i, per I personally uh adore abby maria's company now you're scared <laughs> <laughs> no she, i would rather she, watch abby abby's yeah. great tv i would rather watch abby for sure mm -hmm. but i i would never i would never play with her again yeah you know i was th thinking of speaking of abby maria watch this transition uh, okay go back to survivor philippines yeah. and uh, the matt singh tribe i was just thinking about like where we really we love that season and thought that that was so interesting to watch the plight of Matt Singh. And really, I, I felt like that um, the journey of like Malcolm and Denise, we were sort of like started with them and we were watching them trying to, okay, how do we figure out uh, and maneuver with this sinking ship right. that we have here? Like ultimately culminating in that, you know, uh, Malcolm and Denise have to figure out that they're worried. Maybe could Russell Swan have an idol? And so they're really trying to figure out. So it was almost like that as the numbers decreased in that situation, the stakes got higher uh, from a strategic standpoint. Yeah. And that was not the case with watching Yanu get down from six to That's three. That's a very good point. That's a really good point. Like the last few votes, I mean, you've got this tight trio they're probably not. I mean, there was some drama around Kenzie last episode, but it seemed, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it didn't seem that sincere. Um, well, it did. Honestly, it seemed like that, um, that there would have been, and maybe had we had gotten a vote last week, um, that that would have been a more, in, a more interesting scenario, but it seems like that Kenzie would have gone home. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't totally buy that. I mean, I, th I felt like the way that Tiff was talking about it, um, or Tiffany was talking, I don't know. Can, we, can I say, can I say Tiff? Um, I, she, think, I tiff, think that's people okay. People calling her Tiff, but yeah. Let's just, um, yeah. the, um, you could end that, up in a Tiff. Yes. Um, that she was not, you know, not on board with that plan. And we, we talked about it last week. I think we thought that it was not going to happen. Well, she said that. Could you imagine if we voted off Kenzie, I would throw myself in the ocean. <laughs> But that, that doesn't, to me, suggest that she wanted to mm -hmm. vote on Kenzie. I mean, I guess it was an option that they were discussing. Yeah, um, it was a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the real winner from this episode and the last episode is, I think, Jolinski, who now, you know, in retrospect, yeah. is much less of a screw-up. You know, at yes. the time, he was like, look at this screw-up. What a goof. And now we're like... Is a legend. Yeah. Now we're like, a what legend. A great, you know, what a, did he, you he see? Like the, the, you know, what they they released uh, the names of the episodes coming up, and that the seventh episode of the season is called Episode Several. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's official or that's doctored. Them. I might have got duped. Good for them. Yeah, who, if it's, I mean, that's that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, just I literally can't Zelensky, see the word several without seeing thinking seven anymore. Like it's completely in, like like colonized my brain. Uh, I just cannot like it's like, absolutely taken over. Yeah. All right. So, a- anything else on the Banu situation? Well, we got to talk about the big thing, which was their choice to not have a vote. How did yes, you feel you about, tweeted this, about this? You know, honestly, it did not bother me. I do see that there are some people who feel like, hey, we should always vote in. in I think in some of the other instances, like I feel like I, I could have seen where uh, that that case could have been made and I would agree with it more. But here in this spot. Every single person is saying the vote is going to be Banu. Uh, if somebody actually wanted to do something different that Jeff, I think, believe even said on the on fire podcast that like, okay, if somebody was secretly planning to do something underhanded, they would like, they would not even suggest that this uh, came up. And I think you had a novel idea. Well, what I um oh I need a good idea for a novel. No. Um what I had um suggest what I, what I had written was that and actually I've seen that other people have suggested the same thing uh, uh, subsequently or or they may have um but but th- was that now you know that if there's no counter plans they're willing to do this. You know, um and I actually just read a tweet um from from Heather Cannon where she kind of like actually expanded further on it um than I had about the idea that like you know they're taking information that like secret information that they have from confessionals that there is no other plan you know that that is um that's going to happen and they're they're like using that to structure how tribal council works right We're, well we don't need to vote because everyone agrees this is the plan there's no there's no devious anything now if you go into tribal like push jeff you know first you know future survivor players Push Jeff on it. We're like, okay, we, we're all agreed on the plan. This person knows it's them. Let, let, we don't need a vote. And if mm-hmm. someone says there's going to be a vote, and they're like, no, we have to have a vote today. You're like, oh, oh, there's something I don't know about going on. You know, I mean, it does kind of mess with the format. And I'm curious, like, you know, Jeff's explanation, I read his interview, I think with Dalton, where he explained, you know, he said, you know, this, this way, Banu got to go out on his own terms. Mm-hmm. And that's like literally counter to the whole format of Survivor, where you never like you're going out on other people's terms. You don't get to go out on your own terms. Like the whole point of being voted out is that you're you're going out yeah. not on your terms. Well, I think we saw this in practice last season on the Sean quit, where Sean was like, "I'd like to go home." Uh, right. Meanwhile, there was a plan in the works to potentially vote out Sifu, and right. so that right. they did insist on a vote in that particular uh, instance. And then we know that Sifu ended up getting uh, that one vote from D, which ended up creating a lot of problems. I I do think from a a TV standpoint, in this particular instance, like I think that we know everybody was on board here in in doing that. There's only three votes. Uh, I don't know necessarily like how there would have been some kind of big bait and switch that could have happened. But if my it's only TV request standpoint, just yada yada. It. It's like it's not like a lot of screen time to be like, now it's time to vote. Yeah, okay, show them walking up, read the votes. That's like half a second, you know. I mean, it's it, not it'd be more than half a second. second it's like, all right, first but... vote, Banu. Here's my thing: that Jeff right. reaches in, takes out all the Banu votes. It's all Banu. <laughs> <laughs> just all do it fast ones. forward with Benny Hill music. He holds up on. all the Banu votes. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all Banu, 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 Banu. <laughs> That's fair. That is fair. But I still think that it sets a bad precedent where now players know that yeah. there's a world where you don't have to vote also in the past like hasn't it been like a badge of ignominy you know like ignominy did i pronounce that correctly um depends what you're gonna say next um wh- <laughs> does it <laughs> um you know it was like varner was like sent out without you don't deserve a vote get out of here you know you don't deserve mm-hmm. to be like part of this game we're like take you know who else has been sent home without a vote branded hands yeah yeah, get out of here. You know, you're, you're done. Like, this is not like a badge of honor for your, like, beautiful story. Like, this is mm-hmm. like you are, like, a terrible human and need to be, like, removed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I see what you're saying. Um, In, in this particular instance, it, it didn't bother me. I was really... I didn't even think they were going to have a tribal council. I was yeah. like... Uh, they were on the beach. I kind of thought, like, oh, it's like five minutes left. I, I feel like that maybe is Jeff just coming out here on a boat? Yeah. Yeah. Um... <sighs> 
I don't know. I just get like the, the precedent. It's like, you know, now, you know, now, you know that yeah. if it's, oh, it's, it's, it's unanimous, you know, even he knows there's no, sh- I mean, it, it is rare that there's no shot in the dark that can be played. Right. So there's all, in some ways, this is actually a virtue of the shot in the dark is that it, it always creates a little bit of, of a question stops mm-hmm. Jeff from just, you know, <laughs> from just skipping the vote entirely every time. Yeah. We don't really need to do this. Let's just move on. This okay. is more of an emotional experience, <laughs> not about a vote. Yes. Okay. Steven, uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff going on, because I think that we're sort of uh, sort of for the first time uh, this season starting to get some uh, interesting uh, strategy talk at the other two tribes. OK, yeah. uh, let's start with Siga and Jem and uh, her maneuver with the beware advantage. Uh, did you like what Jem is doing? I think I liked it. I mean, it does create. A lot. I mean, I don't know, to be honest. I, I do, you know, you talk a lot about how players will often, you know, I think it was Matt. Was that last season? Well, Matt, sometime in the last five seasons, two seasons ago, Matt, um, you know, just do things to Matthew. Matthew, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do I, things... I thought, thought you were talking about Survivor of the Amazon for a second. <laughs> yeah. The great strategist, Matt, mm-hmm. um, from Survivor of the Amazon, sharpening his machete, will, uh, you know, they'll just do things and it, it will seem strategic because it's things, it's things that are happening. Mm-hmm. I don't know, though, because inherently what this does is it creates a question where is this? And, you know, Gems pitching it as well this is my opportunity to point fingers and point, mm-hmm. you know, target people but you know why wouldn't it re- rebound onto her it's um, just it's such a small tribe yeah it's like it creates suspicion it create you know she has this thing nobody knows about it everybody thinks it doesn't um people most people most of them apparently think they haven't even found it yet like that level of secrecy seems like a much better position to be in than to have like everybody kind of like wondering and pointing fingers and suspecting. Like, what do you, what do you think, Rob? Yeah. I just thought it was, you know, framed as a gem is like, Hey, you gotta have fun when you're out here on survivor. But right. I thought that she kind of got lucky where Mariah was the person who said like, Hey, what? Well, like, I bet it's Tim who has the idol. Right. And it's like, Oh, that would be so classic Tim. Right. Uh, and then they framed it to Maria that way also. And it seemed like it ends up being a way that we're, you know, burying Tim among the other people in the tribe. I, I just feel like that you're leaving a lot to chance here. And you're creating like confusion later where like, Oh, we want to vote at Tim, but we think he has the idol. Um, you know, why Tim? Like, did she actually want the target to be on Tim or mm-hmm. did she just want like there to be a floating target? Cause that's fun. I mean, to me, I think the optimal move here is to not say anything, but I also could be convinced otherwise. Yeah. I think it's a better situation where it's just like, Oh, we, we can't find the idol in right. our tribe as opposed to creating some animosity because, you know, we don't know what Tim and it looks like next week that maybe Tim is going to start making some accusations about who has the idol. And so I, I think that uh, I just don't like a scenario that I can't control what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. And especially where, like, if nobody suspects you, why, like, let's get people to start wondering who has the idol. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. why would you, why even raise that question? Yeah. But so, we don't know that much about what's actually happening in Sega, right? Like, obviously they have, you know, there was a secret scene, I think, where, you know, everyone was trying to get Ben to commit to a name mm-hmm. and like Ben refused to like commit to any names because like he didn't want to, you know, go against the. He's the, the vibes there. guy, the vibes guy. Right. But they, there must be. And we, we have a little bit of sort of the rough contours of what the the tribal dynamics are in Sega, but not really. And, you know, maybe there's a reason that we didn't that we don't know that they're like, oh, what if we what if we frame Tim for this? Wouldn't that, you know, totally help our position in the tribe? But yeah, we didn't see that from Jem. We just saw you know, kind of a fun desire to create some chaos, but I, I don't Do think, think there's that, a, a lot of upside. Um, Sega could potentially throw a challenge here. It doesn't seem like they have that desire though. There doesn't seem to be any real um, need, right? Like there's no, mm-hmm. there's no one person who seems to be like, there's, we, we've seen more tensions on Nami, right. Then, then you could more imagine them kind of throwing a challenge. Um, than, than, than... Yeah. 
I there is a secret scene this week also that Tim is very homesick. Uh, Tim is very much missing his family. Um, you know, I, I try not to like uh, break my brain and think too much about like with, if he does go out next, would they be more likely to show that or less likely to show that in this episode? But he is uh, feeling like it's feeling like there's a momentum building against him. Also, Tim, maybe his heart isn't 100 percent in the game right now. Right. That's interesting. That's interesting. OK, let's um, talk about. Oh, oh, unless you have anything else on no, 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 go ahead. I was going to segue to Nami yeah. and uh, what's going on there, where Tevin is starting to look towards Soda as somebody who is a big threat. Is this too much? What's your take? Is this this is this is winning tribeitis, right? Is this or yeah. is this winning tribeitis? Yeah, I, I think it's winning tribeitis. I think that it, it's too much to start looking at allies that are in your own uh, tribe. You you have numbers. I, I think that you, the the mid merge is such a um, minefield for these players, especially if you're somebody who is a big threat themselves, like Tevin. I just don't think that you should be going into that potential situation. Uh, without one of your closest allies who may also be a threat, but I think you're thinking about day 26 and not what's happening on day nine. Yeah. And, and um, I do want to say though, I thought the way Tevin approached it with Hunter was very thoughtful and elegant. You know, he always phrased it in terms of like putting, putting the words kind of almost in Hunter's mouth, you know, be like, as you already know, soda is super social. So are you saying we should maybe target soda? You know, he never like, proposed it as his idea mm -hmm. he always kind of phrased it as a question and like to me as you know rob which is from from talking to me for i don't know 600 years um that like that's the stuff that i think really is the heart of survivor strategy are the yeah. little ways you kind of phrase a conversation and you sort of you know frame something within a strategic chat to get your allies on board like to me that's the heart yeah. of good play and i thought i think tevin is very natural and good at that yes uh he It'll be very fun to see what he's going to do next. And I feel like that that's where, you know, look, I try to find the silver lining. And that's where my optimism comes from today in that Peridium had a, a tweet about this, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the great Peridium that uh, he described uh, season 46 as being constipated by the Banu storyline. <laughs> now they've. With all due respect out. to Banu, yeah, it yeah. was it was blocking a lot yeah. of the action yeah. up. The merge is but three days away. Mm -hmm. The players, I feel like, have uh, probably, as we saw with this storyline at Nami, where that they are starting to get antsy. They're thinking about the merge. They're thinking. They're looking at who are the threats within their tribes. I feel like that we could be set up here for a very exciting second two thirds of the season. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's, 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 you got a lot of, you know, really interesting players who just haven't had a chance to play yet. I mean, as we've seen, Hunter is amazing at everything. Um, yeah. And so I'm so curious to see him actually play the game. Um, Tevin is, is one of my favorites uh, mm -hmm. this season. I know he's, he seems controversial though. I think a lot of people I've heard, like some people don't like really? Tevin. Yeah. Uh, why? Who's not like people. Well, I think there's like team Venus people who don't like Tevin. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I think that where Venus is going to go is a very interesting storyline to watch here as we head towards the merge, because now, you know, these merge votes start coming like pretty fast and furious where we're going to have like one more normal vote coming up next week. But then we get to mergatory and then we split things up and then that's basically two tribes of six. And then we get down to the final 10. Sometimes that happens in like the course of like two or three days. Yeah. Like very quickly, we're going to be going from like zero to 60 in this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting. Um, but if either Nami or Yanu lose one more person, uh, Sika's got, you know, basically got the numbers. They've got a tie. Can, yeah, they, you, can they stay together? Can they stay together? I mean, I feel it feels like though this tension with Tim yeah. seems to be the one thing maybe that I would say maybe they're not going to be able to do it because they might be like situated best out of any tribe that we've seen in the new era to be able to potentially run the table. You have yeah. Tevin who's looking at trying to get rid of Soda. You only have three people left in Yanu. And so like, I feel like that unless the other two tribes come together to go up against Siga, like, and, and Siga doesn't even seem to have the one person who's like dying to flip. Yeah. 
right. and get away from them. Like uh, they've been like the epitome of like what you look for for like a tribe loyalty perspective. So Sega could be like set up really well, especially if there's fractures that are going on. Like if Venus is like looking to flip, like maybe like going with some of the young women that are on uh, Sega is a potential uh, way that she might want to go. Is that like, is just, is Sega like, why is it? Like, is it because Ben has got such great vibes? I actually think it could be part of it. I think like having someone who's just like preaching this. He's no drama. Of, they're all no drama though. It's kind mm -hmm. of a no drama tribe. Like, is it like, what if, if one of them was on Yanu, would they be high drama or did they just like put all the, the high drama people in one spot? I mean, like all right, what... pick a person and, and I'll tell you how they get sucked into the drama at Yanu. Mariah. All right, Mariah is there, and now, okay, she can't jump, so Q's got to give her coaching <laughs> on, like, how to jump. And maybe she's not jumping right, and Q yeah. is getting frustrated. Yeah, yeah. What about Charlie? <laughs> Charlie, he comes in, yeah. and then maybe nobody there likes Taylor Swift, mm. and now he's oh, like, what, wow. what? None of you have ever heard about Taylor Swift? Yeah. Huh? I do think like a tribe cheerleader, like someone like Ben is actually like, I, I don't know, like, actually, and this is going to seem a weird comparison, but I think Philip on the favorites tribe in Survivor mm -hmm. Caramoan served a similar purpose yeah. where he was so into this idea. This is our group. Like, like we're, uh, you know, this is the team, like we're strong, like the glue person. Yeah. Like he, like beating that drum of like, this is the group, you know, like, you having someone like that to so kind of like create this like energy around your your team i think actually does have an effect yeah i think that that's a pretty good point i'm trying to think of okay so uh, who was that person uh at uh timbira and jalapao I mean, we were we actually were sort of a love tribe at Jalapa once once Carolina was gone. Once mm -hmm. like, you know, we, we there was there was there was one that we had to get rid of Carolina to to have that kind of that kind of vibe. But we were Joe Dowdle. Uh it was all sort of like, you know, it was it was a love tribe, but it was it was not there was not that one person. Um yeah. Yeah. I, I mean like on, and on um on Bion, I mean, I think we had Sierra, uh um Sierra Easton, who was very much like, you know, the the games person, the, 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 the vibes person, you know, she, she really kept, I had, but like, we weren't even a love tribe to the extent that, that, uh, see is at least from what we've seen. Yeah. I feel like that typically okay. this person is like the mom. I feel yeah. like that, uh, you have like, sort of like that, uh, like cheerleader type, uh, where I feel like is like the person who's really like, I feel like last season, like the, uh, mama J type. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I wonder, you know, I'm curious to think like who else, like what, you know, does this hold any water, this theory that, you know, of, of like the cheerleader character, the, I think you know, it's pretty good. I yeah. think it's pretty okay. good. Stephen, we have a lot of questions from the listeners, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start to answer some of them, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great question from Ryan Patterson. Stephen, who do you think the show is going to pivot to as the new central character now that Banu is gone? If so, who? Ooh. Who's our new main character of Survivor 46? Oh, I hope there is no main character. I mean, <laughs> that's what's those the seasons of Survivor that I think we all like the most are the ones where there's not a main character. That said, hmm. I do think. Uh, well, the, like, well, can I can I uh, just uh, fact check? Uh, so I guess so. What are the greatest seasons of Survivor? Heroes versus villains. Heroes, is there okay, no main heroes character. Villains, I mean, you could say Russell is a main character, but you also have Parvati on that season. He's you know, like you the have main Coach antagonist. Austin, yeah, right, yeah. You have a lot of big characters on that season. I mean, that's you know, same with fans' favorites. I, you know, you couldn't say there's one main character character on that season um yeah pearl islands is there a main character um no, kagayan you have um tony obviously but mm -hmm. even so like again it's like, like there's a lot of other things going on yeah like rupert is the main character and then but then he's gone yeah like so and maybe china again yeah. like a ton of like big characters maybe the key to a great survivor season is that there are end up being like shifting main characters yeah yeah that's right okay like that. all right but if anybody ends up emerging, I, I wonder maybe this might be a big tell in terms of our winner next week. Mm -hmm. If we come into next week's episode and we look at, okay, this person then really in the post Banu world really dominated the screen time. Could that person be our winner? I feel like it could be Tevin. I feel like 
in the action on Nami, we get a lot from Tevin's perspective, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, but or maybe it's just my bias because I really like him. Um, but I um I see a lot from Tevin. What do you what do you think? I mean, I don't know that not that that, this, that makes him the winner, but just that that makes him I think a, that a Tevin has character. a big role to play in this season. Like I'd yeah. be very surprised if Tevin goes out soon. I feel like that he's really been like from giving him like the opening confessional of the season. I don't know if he's the winner, but I do feel like that he has a major role still to play in the season. Yeah. Can Hunter I mean, like Hunter is amazing. I mean, he's yeah. not amazing at everything. That jump was insane. Yeah. Okay. Well, I could we talk a little bit about that in terms of like some of the things that he has done in these challenges and how big yeah. of a target does that put on his back? He's also been in the spot where he's the closer, where he's yeah. the person who's like hitting the final shot of like Tevin. Oh, sorry. Uh, the hunters win. Hunter wins immunity. So how big of a deal is that? I mean, it, uh, he's it so doesn't go good at challenges that. Yeah. That can have like, I mean, you know, he could win out. I mean, I don't know, like, who's his competition? I mean, really, like, obviously, the, there's a lot of different challenges that 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 mm-hmm. bring in a lot of different skill sets. But in he's terms of who's them really all. good, right? He's practiced them. Like, who's really good at the challenges other than him? I mean, Q's good, right? Um, but who's he's really fine? Good? What? He's fine. He's not. He's not Hunter. He's not Hunter. He's zero for four in immunities. Yeah. Um, who's bringing it home for Sega? Well, Sega just seems to be like a well-oiled Charlie. machine. Yeah, yeah, they, they do work. Char- Charlie does really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I mean, there's a lot of different challenges to come, though, so it's hard to really, really say. You know, the, the skill sets start to vary more. Okay, um, but but also he made apparently he tweeted this to Carson that he made the broom that Venus was. He's even making <laughs> brooms. I thought so. I thought that that might have been. I because like um, th- I didn't think that was in the toolkit. Uh, yeah. That made sense that uh, you made the broom. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about um, from Sarah Cupcakes? She wants to know, do you think that there would be so much negative feedback about this season if we had just not seen a season of Lulu losers? That's interesting. Like this sense of oh, another losing tribe, like so terrible. Well, that's been sort of the subtext of like, oh, this is how the three tribe format is. There's always one tribe that's a disaster. Yeah. We used to love the three tribe format. You know, mm-hmm. when the three when they brought out, I mean, not obviously the early day, like when they brought out again the three tribe format season 25, we were like, oh my gosh, this is changing everything. You know, because we had had a lot of seasons where there was just this per- group of five people stuck together. They voted everybody off it was very boring suddenly three tribes were like mixing up the dynamics but it does seem like it's kind of unnecessary because the groups are mixing the dynamics up by themselves a little bit more than Mm -hmm. yeah i do think that the right balance is sometimes it's three sometimes it's two keep people on their toes Uh, i started a twitter conversation this week about uh is that i know everybody is always uh, talking about the final two is definitely superior to a final three and I just wanted, wanted to like, are we sure? Are we sure that the final two is better than a than a final three? Well, you're biased. Uh, no, it, it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. You're like, mm, what if they had, had a final three? But I just think that, and a lot of people, what they responded is like, I, I think the best answer is they should mix it up. Sometimes yeah. it should be a final two, and sometimes it should be a final three. I, I yeah, I mean, listen. All I wanted out of my life was a final three. I, so your argument in favor of a final three is that um, it gives there just one more one more of a competition, right? Between two in a people. perfect world, yeah. I would love to see there be some way to like pre eliminate the zero vote finalist. Like I and I don't know the, the like uh, the best way to do it. David Healy on Twitter had said like the jury votes like unanimous. If they vote unanimously, that zero vote finalist ends up being like, if there was some way to sort of suss out, okay, who is the person who will not get, will not get a vote. And if you could send that person to the jury and end up be having to be a competitive battle between two people. Like a pre-vote from the jury of like, who's the person nobody's voting for. I don't know how to execute it. That is not clunky, but that would be my favorite way to do that. Where then you could really have, okay, this or that. Yeah. Cause all of the jury, if they, if the jury had that power, they would vote for the, like the villain, you know, they would be like the person who they don't want to win, who probably should deserve. Right. You know, like, like like the, like the anti whatever person. Uh, so, 
Um, but I do think that going back to two tribes versus three tribes, like it would be great if we could sort of like mix it up where, okay, in a season, like if Survivor 45 was three tribes, okay, we're getting a Survivor 46, that's two tribes. Keep us yeah. and the viewers uh, and the contestants on their toes. Yeah. I will say, I think most of the time, like the person getting voted out in that third, like why do people, I mean, is in that third place spot is one of the bigger threats. Obviously not in my season. Mm -hmm. um, but in most other seasons, the person who's getting voted out and and not, I mean, I think probably non Kagayan too, right? Which are the last, mm -hmm. are those the last two final twos? Yes. Um, I mean, we got to vote, uh, mm -hmm. but like Cass was third, right? Yes. And it was like, yeah. So, I mean, that, whatever. Tony knew he was going to, you mm -hmm. know, lock and, 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 well, what everybody agreed on was, yeah, yeah. and what everybody agreed on was that the the fire making is bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Final yeah. three alone would be fine. But you're pro fire making, right? Just for TV drama. No, I'm not. I, you, you made the point though. No, which I thought was a good point. It's like, we don't like fire making from like a structural capacity, but like it does create a lot of, it has you know what, when it's happening, drama. it's always interesting, but yeah. I would rather get rid of it because I feel like that if you had a final three, Half the time you get it anyway. And again, I, I think that the the thing that would make it good is like, ooh, oh, okay, it's 2-2 two, two tie. We're getting fire making. Right. It's when you have to have it every single season, that's when it's bad. I think yeah. that the variety, it's the spice of life. Mm. And Survivor. I love cinnamon. Yes. That's my... I, I didn't know this about you. Yeah, I love cinnamon. And yeah. you really screwed me up, Rob, a couple what? months ago... This children's applesauce company, they found lead in their cinnamon. And um, it turned out that one of the suppliers was deliberately adding lead to not fortunately, thank God, this was not something that affected oh my me or God. my kid. But like they were deliberately adding lead to the cinnamon because it increased the weight, so therefore increased the price. And it like it had like a nice cinnamony color to it. Who knew that about lead? But it's crazy. I, it, I'm still like reeling from this idea that people are out there adding lead to cinnamon. I'm still eating cinnamon, you know, mm -hmm. lead poisoning. Versus they can't cinnamon. stop I, you. I shouldn't yeah. talk about lead poisoning because that's like seriously effed up. Yeah. Um, anyway, that really like rocked my world. I'm very upset about it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, boy, anyway, but was anyway, not back prepared to for that one. Reading. What? <laughs> was not prepared for that. Yeah. I really like, I want more people to know about this because it was so screwed up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was it, is it a company that we've heard of? I don't remember, but it was like, it was, you know, some children's like okay. food company, you know, they obviously they've recalled the, you know, stopped the, you know, issue, <laughs> but like terrible. So scary. Yeah. People are adding lead to children's food. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. I have, I have no follow up. Yeah. Horrible. But anyway, let's get back to the fire making. Okay. Yeah. So final three. And, and people's argument is final two is just feels like more of like a battle. But, it's classic. Know. It's yeah. like a, you know, a mono, e mono, uh, womano, e womano. But what's the best final two in recent memory? Oh, well, okay. Sticking to uh, the US seasons, I mean, I feel like, you know, um, if like Dominic and Wendell was pretty much a final two. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that wasn't, but that literally wasn't. I mean, like, to, you know, to the point mm -hmm. of like the structure of the game, like, had that it would not have been a final two right like had that been i mean that's exactly the argument for a final three was that probably one of them would have voted out the other one um i'm yeah i'm not sure you don't think you don't think, <laughs> come on had it been a, had it been a final two like i think if they maybe... were a final two and there was a final three immunity challenge yeah and there was an opportunity like who either presumably either dom or wendell wins they're voting out the other one of themselves Right. Yeah, I guess if there was a final, if if like uh, Dominic or Wendell won that final uh, immunity challenge, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that is the argument for the final three, like Dominic. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Survivor Forty Six if we have to. No, just kidding. Okay. Um. Let's see. What haven't we talked about? Um. Okay. Let's talk about the Flint. Mm. A lot of people are talking about the Flint. Yeah. Kelly wants to know, could Yanu have taken another tribe's flint? I never knew you could trade reward. Since when? No, I do think it's no, established that it is a previous <laughs> reward. You can get a previous reward. You can have a previous reward uh, that it came up. I'm sure if it was in, I'm not sure if it was season 43 or 44. And Jeff was like, as we all know. <laughs> exactly. That was the since when moment. But now, that now, was since when. now, now yeah. I guess it, but Jeff did say like, yes, of course, obviously. Yeah. 
You can trade a reward for a previous reward. Yeah. But Steven, shouldn't there be a flint that comes with the fish? Like, aren't we getting very like if if it was that you have to win a challenge, like ah, uh, uh, not a reward challenge. <laughs> you only get a flint if you win an immunity challenge. Yeah. I um I, I'm not a fan of them not getting a flint. It just seems purposeless. I mean, it probably creates this, you know, it probably at least contributes to this, you know, losing tribe dynamic where, you know, if you can't have a fire, you're sleeping worse, you're having a worse time at camp, you can't cook, you know, the seafood that you can get, right? You, you can't really, you can't cook the mollusks. So there's, you know, you're at a food disadvantage. Yeah. Who's um, this for? Why are we yeah. doing this? It's not, it's not better TV. It's worse TV. So mm -hmm. this idea yeah. that it's like a more brutal game is so, that doesn't affect me at all. Like I would rather it were a better game. Yeah. Even in the fiction of the show, come to yeah. tribal council. Fire represents your life. We see the end of the episode, right? They walk out with lit torches. Yeah. yeah they've got fire. Explain right. that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Just let them, let them have a flint. Yeah. I think we're all, I, I mean, and it's better, you know, when the contestants have obviously part of the survivor experience is having an intense survival experience. Yeah. But it's better when they have a little bit of food, you know, a little bit of calories, yeah. a little bit of sustenance. Otherwise, you're just like lying listlessly there. It's not good TV. Here's another one for you, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. So we see then Nami wins immunity. After it's over, Jeff says, all right, Nami tribe, you won immunity. Go ahead. Let's see that celebratory leap in into the water <laughs> yeah, right. off and of then, the dock. I'm like, then, uh, ooh. Yeah. And then... <laughs> for this uh, uh, Yanu yeah, tribe, yeah. he says, and sorry for you. You're the losers. You're going to have to swim out. <laughs> what yeah. was the difference? Yeah. Maybe they weren't allowed to leap. <laughs> it's like I've been <laughs> walk the plank. Yeah. Don't leap. This has to be a Mariah skip. Yeah. Is it just because that sorry for you? Normally he would say sorry for you. I'll take your flint. Yeah. But they had no flint. So he just had to say sorry for you. The same exact thing that I told the team that won, but in a bad version. <laughs> yeah. No. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah. That Simpsons episode, the, the stone cutters one where Homer is like unyanked from the rock of like heroism and yanked to the rock <laughs> of shame or it was the opposite actually. Whatever. Yeah. yeah just, you'll, you'll have to have the yeah. long swim out. Yeah. No leaping. Okay. All right. Um, Danny wants to know, does Banu's word vomit on the journey ensure that Tiff, Q, and Kenzie will be immediately targeted by the other tribes at the merge? Which of the three remaining Yanu members is best suited to take the target off their back? I do think it's going to be, I mean, it certainly doesn't help them, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That's a good question. Which member is got is is in the better position of Yanu? What do you think here, Rob? I think it's Kenzie. Yeah. I, I know that um, it was um, that... Banu said she's the mastermind, but I think that the pair is scarier than the uh, uh, one mastermind. Yeah, I agree. And also, um, yeah, I think, and Kenzie's got such like good, like fun energy, right? You're like going to meet her. You're going to be like, oh, you're going to be charmed by her. You're not going to be like, oh no, she's manipulating me. Um, you're going to think you're going to, you're just going to be charmed. Uh, and Kenzie does not seem for what it's worth. You know, she seems someone who's like willing to talk through ideas, which on, on the Yanu tribe was often <laughs> taken for, you know, the absolute sin of survivor. But um, she doesn't seem like, you know, someone who's like aggressively, you know, plotting and, and, and pulling threads. So I agree with you that yeah. the pair, like the danger of the pair, which is something you can't really argue against. Yeah. Um, versus like, I don't see Kenzie manipulating me. You know, I see her like bopping around the beach, but I don't see her necessarily, you know, although, you know, I will say as a counterpoint, I mean, Caleb was the Kenzie of season 45. And at, yeah. once he got to the mergatory, once he was vulnerable, everybody's like, all right, it's got to be Caleb. So but Caleb was also, you know, he was like a, a six foot six, you know, extremely athletic. Like, you know, there was a lot more. And I do think like that. That's very six, six. Well, I, I was exaggerating to yeah. you know, for, for effect. Mm -hmm. So I should go. On, I should go on bigger. I, he was <laughs> a, a, a twelve foot tall. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Maybe he, when his hair is at like maximum height. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah. So I mean, like he he was, and he it seemed like he was like so excessively charming that people were, um, you know, intimidated by that. Yeah. 
So we'll see. I think it might be paramount for Kenzie to get into the successful mergatory group. Yeah. Yeah. Like when it's like, all right, we just need a name today. Then, okay, that's an easy one to throw out there. Yes. Um, I agree. I think like, yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, she, she could be an, an early target. It's hard, it's hard to say, but I think they're, they're all kind of in a, in a bad spot here. Okay. Ben wants to know, did Q, Tiffany, and Kenzie play the first stage of the game wrong? At the end of the day, the decisions they made led to them losing every immunity challenge, being outed as huge threats by a tribe member and putting themselves into a really bad spot going forward. Were these the cards that they got dealt or was this bad gameplay? I think we agreed that it was a mistake to vote off um, Jelinski first instead. Yes. Of I, yes. I think like, and I do think there was sort of a spiraling, you know, issue there yeah. where as soon as they lost... Uh, you know, Jelinski, you know, it, a lot of people were like, oh, but he would have quit the second challenge anyway. But like, mm, no, he wouldn't know, have. He wouldn't have, right? Like, he, that's not true. Uh, yeah. It's a funny thing to say, and it's, it's a great tweet, but yeah. I don't think it's really true. Um, Honestly, the, my question is, looking back at this with like uh, 2020 hindsight, should they have voted out Banu first? Yeah, I still think that like, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe. where What was happening with Banu in that first episode? So, I mean, ultimately, he did not have a particularly wild first episode up yeah. until that he could not hide from Jelinski at the first tribal council. Right. That Jelinski was going home and he uh, that, like he got asked a pointed question at tribal council by Jeff and said. It is time to vote. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I felt like at the time, you know, our read on Banu was like, hey, this is like a really, you know, a really lovely, well-meaning guy. He mm -hmm. just like has a little bit of, you know, he's got, you know, doesn't have a great poker face. You know, his his true his true sort of strategic struggles really emerged uh, the following yeah. episode with with um, with Jess. And honestly, like there's a chance that for someone like Banu, a lot of the problems that we saw him confront were you know, certainly exacerbated by a lack of food and a lack of sleeplessness. Yeah. You know, it's hard for anybody to be their best self when they're not eating and they're not sleeping. And um, I said a lack of sleeplessness. I want a lack of sleep. Uh, it's hard to, for anybody to be their best self when they're not eating or sleeping. And, you know, he did seem to be decently together in those early days. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I think that I'm going to stand by. I think you, you got to keep Jelinski at that first tribal council because I think that that just set you, this tribe on such a negative trajectory to yeah. then have lost that second challenge. Yeah. And if it was between Jelinski and Jess, I think that was the right call to to get rid of Jess there. Um, and that then you maybe don't lose the second challenge and you're like, have a little bit more of a sense of tribe cohesion, a sense of tribe momentum. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think that, you know, some of the real negative spiraling effects of just consistently losing. I think they could. I mean, won. even the third challenge, they lost it by like a sandbag. Yeah. You have to think, you know, you had Jelinski in that challenge. Um, Instead of either, you know, uh, well, I guess uh, we're, I guess maybe instead of who's it? I guess no, they're there. I guess they have five people there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like I feel like that they're probably uh, gonna get that one done. Yeah, um, yeah. So there you go. They screwed it up. Okay. All right. Anything else, Stephen, from uh, week four of Survivor Forty Six? Um. No, I mean, there wasn't that much to talk about, really, you know, and we still managed to talk about it for, you know, almost as long as the episode in terms of pure runtime. So mm -hmm. uh, good for us. Yeah, we did a pretty good job, I think, overall. Yeah. But I just think that uh, overall, the, what, what, do we, what do we miss? What, what do we no, miss? I don't at? think we missed anything. I, I think the best is yet to come. So look, the ba like the Banu stuff seemed like a great guy. Nice story. Went on too long. Wasn't his fault. He doesn't edit the episodes, but yeah. I think we're all ready to turn the collective page. And and I do think that there is like uh season 44, I feel like had like a tough start to the beginning of the season and then had a pretty exciting post merge. And I think this just might be a season where a little bit of like a subpar pre merge. And then I think that things could be very exciting in the post merge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's my thought going into next week. Very Good excited time. to see Great where time. we go from here. Steven, what's coming up for you? Nothing. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Spring break next weekend, next week, you know, we're not yes. doing anything. Yeah. Not doing home. anything. We're just having some, you know, family time. Oops. Nice. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Well, what we have coming up next is my interview with Banu. We're going to yeah. premiere that here live on the channel. If you are watching us uh, right after this, we'll have uh, the exit interview with Banu. Uh, plus, the podcast is going to drop. I also took on Jake O'Kane in this week in Survivor History Trivia. Huh. I didn't know that he was such a Survivor Trivia buff. Remember? He was like, J Krabs, 18 is JT. That Remember? No, I do remember that. But like, that's, yes. you know... That's not, I wouldn't say that, that makes you a trivia mastermind. <laughs> well, we'll see how good he is when he yeah. takes me on this week in Survivor History Trivia. Not to mention, also, uh, we will have our amazing race recap coming up later on today. Uh, Mike and Jess are going to have the episode two amazing race recap and everything else we're doing here on robhasawebsite.com. Check out my interview with uh, Marianne after the episode if you missed that. And then make sure to leave us your comments. I love reading what you all have to say on YouTube in yeah, the comments. Too. I always read the comments on YouTube. And even if you disagree, as long as you're not a total a-hole, I like to hear uh, all your feedback. So please, I only uh, want to hear praise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that, sure. Praise. Um, but it, like, if, if you have to leave some negative feedback, that's fine. Leave just it about like, uh, Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, just don't be horrible. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Oh, hold on, uh, hold on. Yo, fishy, fishy. Oh, fishy, fishy. Who do we got to give the fishy to? Could, did somebody get a fishy this week? I mean, I guess. I mean, who? It's got to be somebody. It's got to be somebody. I guess. I mean, here's. Ugh, it's a tricky one. I guess I would say Q because Q went through the paces of trying to improve Banu's game. You know, he was like, "This is, you know, as we were saying before, you know, I'm stuck with this guy for now." I am going to like put in the effort to try mm -hmm. to make him better. I kind of think he did. I, I think he like actually gave him a few stock answers that he could have called on in a, in a tough situation. And obviously we'll never know for sure, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm going to give it again. I think I gave the first episode to, to, to Q2, which is it's questionable now mm -hmm. that we agree. But that then you said in the second choice. episode, you wanted to go back and take it away from him. All right, let's get rid of Q's <laughs> first fishy. He can have it here. Episode three. <laughs> it's four. Four episode four. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, all right. Do we think that Banu is uh, still in a comfortable lead for the Sia money? Oh, I never thought that. I, I was like, you were very sure about that. I was like, mm, I don't know. I still think he is. I, 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 I think, think you know what I'll say that maybe he'll okay. look number three. He's, he's like the, in. He's on the podium. He's yeah. getting. He's getting the fifteen k from Sia. Like, I think somebody will probably pass him by for the one hundred hearts. Yeah, but I think the 15k hearts. I think that uh, lock up one of those spots for Bonnie. I, I wouldn't say it's a lock. I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. I think he's there. I mean, like 55 percent. Okay, pretty good. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye bye.